So thank God for bringing us, really, bringing us through. Amen. Amen. Um, Amen. An old subject that I really want to recap and drive a certain point home. Um, thank God for the ministry of the word and song. Yes. Yes. We talk about the, this battlefield. Mm -hmm. This being the spirit of the message. Uh, say that to somebody that I'm doing life. I'm doing life. It's without the road. Yes. To put it another way, I'm going to die in the faith mm -hmm. and the grace yes. of God. Yes. Amen. Took hold of this gospel plow and there's no turning back. Amen. No hope that it will ever get free. Amen. Amen. From serving the Lord. And I'm sure, according to the words of the song, that serving the Lord will pay off. Amen. Pulled this from the passage of Scripture, a couple of them, and I put up on the board. Uh, Philemon uh, 1 and 1. Paul says this, and when it reads like this, Paul, a prisoner. Of Christ Jesus. Amen. Still in the same spirit, verse 9, same chapter, verse 9, we pick up the scripture. Where's yet it was says, Yet for love's sake I'd rather appeal to you being such a one as Paul. And of course we know that he says the age, meaning that this is him at a very mature stage of life, probably meant narrowing the end. And he repeats it again. Paul the age, and now also, he says it again, a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. That's repeated again in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, where he, he says, I, meaning Paul, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord. And there are even other passages, but these three sufficient for the point. Beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. Mm -hmm. So Paul states over and over that he refers to himself as a convict, a prisoner mm -hmm. of Jesus. So here comes the question that I want to pose to you that opens up the message. Are you, you say this to somebody, <laughs> are you doing life? Or are you just doing time? Because it's a big difference. Time is just for a moment. It's a duration, it's a season. But life is forever. And until you are convicted of the faith and sentence, you're just serving time. Come on. This is to be negative just for a minute. Throw this out of there and then I'll keep it positive. Positive. Is there anything wrong with our concept of serving God? It is examining whether we're in this thing for life or are we just serving time? And too many Christians are only serving time. What is serving time? Serving time is when I'm in trouble. I'm a servant, like my life depends on. When my back is against the wall, I'm on the law side. When I don't have no other way out, I serve the law. But time, soon as God blesses you with it, come on now, you're right back to doing the same thing that got you in trouble. Come on now. 
because you're not in it for life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And too many Christians, and I'm going all the way home here, on. are just on a work release program. I show up for the weekend and get my pass yeah. to do my weekend time. And then soon as Monday morning get here, yeah. I turn in my weekend pass and I'm right back out into the streets. Because I ain't doing life. I'm only... There is not a conviction in you. Yeah. About your duty and your dedication and your devotion to God. God is a convenience. And I have a schedule. Friday evening I show up. Sunday morning I'm praising. Then Sunday evening I turn in my badge. I'm right back Monday. Yes, I'll see y'all again next Friday. <laughs> <laughs> mm. And I'm not saying that you have to be at the church every time the doors open in that way. What I'm saying is if you are the church, you don't ever lose. You don't ever Thank leave you. the presence of God. And the strong say, take the Lord God with you everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. go. Everywhere you go. So when I'm doing life, there's another whole spirit here. That's the question that I want to just pose with you. Paul, Paul here opens up this thing with a, a testimony. And I'm going to just briefly state it. That, and this is how I, I, I worded it um, about his life. A chance encounter with God on the road to Damascus. We know that. Acts. He says... I met the Lord, and I put it in this way, who from that point on took me into custody of his glory. Mm -hmm. yeah. Meaning that something happened on this road mm -hmm. to the master where I seen the Lord and the power of his majesty, the glory of the Lord shine like a light that knocked me to my feet. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. It changed my life forever. My life. Yes. And I put it this way, that I was taken into custody by the glory of God. And for the rest of my life, I'm serving God with everything I became. Yes, Lord. He says, in other words, a, a prisoner of Christ in another place, a fool for the Lord. And, 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 and a convict, and I was sentenced by, by the Lord to serve him. And I came an apostle to the Gentiles to carry this gospel and I went about. And he says not only that, but I have the, 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 in my body the marks of the Lord. In other words, I've been beaten for this gospel. I've been scorned for this gospel. I went hungry for this gospel. And I would not renounce my faith. I bear in my body the marks. I have the scars. To prove my dedication to this thing. Yes. I'm in it for life. He says, I, I was taken in the custom of his glory and now I've become a convict of the faith. I've been convicted and sentenced that God is real. Look what he goes on to say in my words, there is no hope that I'll ever be free. I have resolved this that I'm going to die in the faith of God. Come on. Die serving God. Die yes. in the body of Christ. Die a prisoner of the Lord. That is my testimony. Yes. Yes. Mm. That come hell or high water, anything else, I'm going to die in the faith of God. Mm -hmm. I'm going to die in the grace of God. In the body of Christ and in the church, I am not only his servant, but his prisoner. Yes. Taken into custody by God. Can, can I just talk for this one? Come on, amen. We can we can all miss the mark. Mm -hmm. 
this is not a, this is an excuse. Don't take it. Don't take it now. Let me see more what I'm saying. I'm trying to set up a point. But then, how do I put this now? You have within you this, 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 this spirit of God mm -hmm. that is a convicting power yeah. 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 that reminds you mm. of whose you are All right now. and who you are. Come on. And, yeah. it is, and it is that does not what which prevents mm. us from wallowing. Because your convicting power yes, tells you, yes. get up. Come on now. Dr. King put it this way, that the glory of our faith mm. is that we can rise when we choose. Yes, Lord. Our faith teaches us. Yes. And then in Pentecostal, they give us a song this way, that there is no power on earth that can keep me down. I will rise again. That is a convicting power. You are yes. convicted of the faith. Yes, Lord. Lord. That does not allow you to remain hostage to anything. But the still small voice says, You belong to God. You are bought with a price. Yes. Redeemed by His blood. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. So you belong to God. And isn't it wonderful that mm -hmm. no matter what happens, mm -hmm. we have the Spirit of God that becomes for us our rescuer, mm -hmm. who rescues us from the mouth of the lion, yes. from the yes. claws of the bear, that yes. rescues us from sin, sickness, disease, mm -hmm. or whatever. We, we have a rescuer yes. that takes us into custody. Yes. There is a powerful passage in uh, Corinthians where Paul says he was caught up to glory when we get the word rapture and I've taught it in, in, in here and then I think the funerals to give some, share some light on it if you get down to the bottom of the translation of the word uh, caught up is where we get the word rapture mm -hmm. and it actually means to be seized or taken into custody mm -hmm. So what Paul is actually saying what we call rapture, Paul calls that being taken into custody. So if there is an analogy that they created that Paul, by fasting and praying, he says, I didn't realize it, but while I was praying and just pressing my way to God, I was chipping and I broke through from the realm of myself. And, and, and hallelujah. I, I got out of, of the little... The, the, the first heaven, as you would call it, actually means the, the kind of subliminal psychological uh, uh, powers. And I got to a higher place, a deeper place in the spirit, which he referred to in other passages as the foundation of the third heaven. Come on. Meaning the place where spirits are, the place where angels dwell. Hallelujah. What we call the mercy seat of God. I kept chipping and praying. That's why sometimes God leads you to pray. And don't stop praying because you don't know you're chipping at the foundation of heaven. What that really means is you are on the verge of getting a breakthrough. And this is why stuff happens to fall away because the enemy is trying to get you out of your breakthrough. Because he knows that if you ever see the light of glory, hallelujah, nothing about your life is going to ever be the same. So he sends a distraction and a distraction and a distraction. Paul says, I kept chipping at the foundation of heaven. And there was a crack made in heaven. And when I saw the light of glory shine on me, it struck all upon me. And I reached my hand through because I knew I had tapped deeper into the spirit. To my surprise, an angel of God grabbed me by my hand and snatched me out of myself. Whether in the body, I don't know. And I saw things that I can't tell you to hold in a mission. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let me say, I really got a desire to depart and go on and be with the Lord. But it is needful for you that I remain to tell you about the goodness of God. There is power in the glory. And until the glory hits your life, you're just doing time. You ain't really serving God. You don't even know who he is until the light of the Lord shine upon you. 
something happen that changes your destiny. Yes. Yes. Come on. Yes. I got seized by angels yes. who snatched me out of myself. Take us there. And I saw something that I can't describe. Jesus. Yes, Lord God. My God. I want to go on and be with the Lord. Oh, I'm caught in straight. Yes. Having the desire to depart. Yes. But also understanding that my mission is not quite over. Come on. Come on. So it's needful Come for on. you, but my life Come on. has been changed. Yes. Amen. So God is mm. real, my Lord. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you are really convicted, yeah. become a convict. Come on. My Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, some people say this again. I said, well, let me do, make one interjection.